right, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry we're running a bit late, and we're going to be brief because we're running a bit late. Uh, my name is Lee Merritt, L-E-E-M-E-R-R-I-T-T, -E -E -E, a civil rights attorney for the family. I'm here with Mr. Harvey Johnson and his wife, uh, the father of uh, Jamie Johnson and his mother, uh, Kim Kimberly Austin. Uh, we had a chance to meet with the investigator or the district attorney, the assistant state attorney, uh, Mark uh, Kalal? Khalil, uh, who's over the case, uh, answered some of the family's questions, talked to them about the process. Um, the family just wants answers. At this point, we are still unclear, even after this meeting, about what exactly happened uh, to Jamie. Um, uh, we were not able to see video footage. We were all looking forward to that being released to the public. Uh, they explained that it's an ongoing investigation. They feel that it may interfere with their investigation and interfere with uh, witnesses' memories uh, if they release the video, and we will respect their um, their decision in that regard. However, this family expects answers without delay. Um, soon they will have to lay, lay Jamie to rest at a time that they should be planning holiday parties, at a time that they should be planning his graduation. Uh, this young man with no criminal record to speak of uh, is dead, and he's at, dead at the hands of law enforcement. Families should not uh, be left with questions uh, a week, two weeks, months after this happened. And so we're conducting our own investigation. We're uh, looking for witness statements, and we encourage any witness who saw this incident, and we understand that they may have been witnesses. We're encouraging them to come forward. Uh, the state attorney's office is encouraging them to come forward. They can report either to my office um, or, or they can report to state attorneys. They can even report to the JSO's uh, a cold case investigative team, but we need those witnesses to come forward. We do not believe the shooting incident itself was actually caught on camera. Uh, for a number of reasons uh, based on our conversation. Uh, and so those witnesses now become critically important. Uh, we'll take questions at this time. Can you why you think that was not caught on camera? Like the why don't you believe it was just caught on From the description that was provided to us, uh, it, it, it seems that the shooting officer's camera uh, became dislodged during the course uh, of the incident. Is that what the state attorney's office told you? Yes. See, as far as that firearm that police say was next to Jamie on the passenger, registered firearm? You know what, I'm not particularly f familiar with the uh, state of Florida's gun laws. Uh, it was legally purchased. It was inside of his vehicle. I'm not sure if it was registered or not. I'm not from a state where you have to register weapons. Do you know why he was pulled over in the first place? Was the initial reason for the traffic stop? The only explanation that we've been given for the traffic stop is a seatbelt violation. Uh, that's what the state attorney told you? And that's what the state attorney said. The only information he had was a seatbelt violation. Um, that's all we know. Did they give you an opportunity to look at any of the video? No, I have not seen any of the video. They're not sharing it with uh, my office or, or with this family at all. Which, I, I, again, this family has offered to sign uh, non-disclosure waivers uh, to, 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 to submit to uh, an agreement with the state that they would not share. What they saw in the video, this family has a right to know. Uh, th those body cam uh, uh, cameras that law enforcement officers wear that uh, their tax de dollars pay for are designed to not leave members of the family in the dark. And so we are offended at the idea that, that, that it can be kept from them. We, we appreciate and we want them to do a thorough and robust investigation that is not interfered with by the unnecessarily release of information. But it seems that law enforcement released information that is favorable to them. Uh, they released information about a gun. There was no need to share the, the, the image of the gun. There was no indication of, of um, well, there was no need to share that. Uh, that seems to certainly disrupt witnesses' memories. Uh, however, uh, because it seemed to help justify the shooting, it was released to the public. Um, why so much protection for this video when we, we could just watch it in this video on our, uh, in this office on our own is beyond me. Uh, they said they wanted to search the vehicle after he mentioned that he he told them that he had a firearm in the car and they wanted to make sure that it was properly stored and that uh under under the, the laws of the state of florida um, and the police said that i guess he pushed the officer did they say why he pushed or why they got into a struggle or argument or that part they stayed away from uh and we were looking forward to seeing the video in order to answer those questions what can you tell us about jamie you said that he was facing I'm going to let Mr. Harvey answer that question if, if he's comfortable answering. You have to step in front of the microphone. Okay. 
a student at FAMU University in Tallahassee, Florida. And was he living in Jackson Hole, Texas? Uh, no, he was actually staying in Tallahassee. Okay, so he was just in town visiting? Uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and explain that weekend the way we did okay. inside. Okay. Friday night, me and my family were all in Tallahassee witnessing my niece graduate from FAMU University also. And um, we were supposed to get together um, Sunday in Gainesville. Me, Jamie, his sisters, my wife, and I had to take family portraits for Christmas. And I guess he got with it, some of his cousins from Jacksonville. I'm from Jacksonville. I got a lot of family here in Jacksonville. So I guess he got with them and he drove ahead to Jacksonville before meeting with us Sunday. So he had just got to Jacksonville when this transpired. So. And um, obviously, that was a really hard phone call when you heard what happened. Um, yes, when JSO officially reached out to us, it was several hours later after we was hearing rumors about him through Facebook, social media. We reached out to them to find out what was going on, gave them a name, location. They were real evasive about it. A couple of hours later, they called us back with the news. Are there anything that comes out to you in terms of a message to the sheriff's office or anything like that in terms of just, I mean, this is an officer according to the police that has been on the force a year and a half and had not been involved in since the first officer of all shooting. Any, any, any message in terms of like I said, just a message out there. If you were talking to Sheriff Williams right now, what would you? I'm lost at what you're saying. The officer that pulled the trigger. This was his first, you know. We don't know that shooting. to be true at this point, and I and no, we don't have the message for him at this time. Our our focus is on criminal accountability. If there is a if if there was a an inappropriate use of force, uh, we haven't really reached any of those conclusions yet. Uh, we would like to speak to the sheriff's office about transparency. Uh, but it, we, we're concerned that it will fall on deaf ears. We're directing those concerns towards the elected official here, the state attorney's office, uh, and we're hoping that they would, would uh, uh, com uh, commit or stick to the commitment that the state attorney ran on, which was transparency uh, in these situations. Right, what so is your level of, of confidence that all of the facts will come out? Hmm. What is your level of confidence in the JSO? Um, Unfortunately, my experience with law enforcement across the country uh, is that their primary concern is the safety and the reputation of their department and their offices. Uh, and that's not necessarily conducive to revealing facts that would harm that reputation. Um, when we're lucky, there is an independent state attorney's office investigation, and that's the reason for this meeting here, uh, that will reveal the facts. Um, and and when, we're, when we're fortunate, witnesses in the community come forward, either to my office or to this office, uh, that, that, that help us along uh, the way in trying to determine what happened. Uh, that's where I'm placing my hope, not necessarily with the transparency or the willfulness of the JSO and, and, and being completely forthright. Do you feel like an illegal use of force happened here? I don't know enough information yet. I know that a young man with no real criminal history, with no criminal history to speak of, uh, with a promising future was, was shot up to four times. Um, and this family, uh, this community, the people who knew him in school, uh, they can't indicate they, they, uh, what he would have done according to his character, his habits, that would justify that. Uh, I, I, I get a lot of calls about police shootings from all over the country. Uh, I got on a plane and came to Jacksonville, Florida because I, I I was uncomfortable with the facts as they were being presented, and I wanted to learn more myself. So what's next? What do we do next? Uh, uh, unfortunately, what's next for this family is preparing a funeral uh, and making funeral arrangements. From my, from my office's perspective, we're, we're performing an independent autopsy. Uh, and we're bringing in a, a shooting reanimationist who will uh, re re recreate the event best he can with the evidence available. Yeah, the state attorney's office has promised to keep us abreast of information as it comes. Uh, we don't have a specific date, but we understand that we'll be communicating with them quite regularly. Okay. What about dash cam footage? No dash cam footage. From what, what we're told, there was no dash cam footage. All right. Thank you all so much for your time.